This conference will now be recorded. Good evening. It's five o'clock and I will call the meeting to order of the Finance Committee with the full council in attendance, a full council meeting um, with that. Um, Brian, will you do roll call or is it? I will do it as long as it doesn't start echoing again. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Mayor Calvin. Here. Councilmember Schwantes. Here. Councilmember Fagerly. Here. Councilmember Nelson. Here. Councilmember Davis. Here. Councilmember Osmus. Here. Councilmember Alvarado. Here. Others present are Brian Grummets. Uh, Judy Thompson and Dave Ramstad, as well as Shelby Lindrud. All right. Um, thank you very much. The first thing we have, and do we um, just to review, we have a variety of action items, but um, to go through the mayor's proposed 2021 budget, the fund balance revenues. And Mr. Gamitz is gonna take us through that. Do we wanna stay with this in the order that it is? Would that be best for everyone? We'll stay with it as is. So, Mr. Gramitz. Well, I'd like to call on uh, <clears throat> Mr. Okins at this point in time, <laughs> but I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, as you have in, as you have in the proposed uh, uh, 2021 budget, there is in the very first section, it uh, talks about the, uh, the the fund balances. As you have heard uh, from our uh, recent audit, that the the city of Wilmer is sitting in a, a, a fairly uh, I don't want to say comfortable, but you know, in, in a fairly good position uh, financially, that it, it has additional funds on hand uh, uh, designated for additional uh, expenses should they be necessary, whether they be emergency, you know, due to, you know, floods, tornadoes, or hurricanes, uh, but also for uh, uh, unallocation of uh, anticipated revenues, which is a potential. Uh, that we might see in uh, 2021, uh, either during or after the state legislative session. There is a talk of uh, being, you know, <clears throat> uh, very deep in the hole as far as the state is concerned, and they're going to be looking for all kinds of uh, ways to uh, reduce that uh, that loss of revenue that they're facing, and one of them will be probably cutting local government aid. So I, I wish they uh, uh, would have had, you know, probably pages, but uh, if you go back about 15, 20 pages, you'll, you'll see the, uh, the general fund uh, current assets, uh, which uh, amount to about uh, 13385311 dollars and 38 cents and uh some of that is is uh encumbered which would be classified as you know reserved only for the purpose to which uh, we are hanging on to it it's a it's a commitment that uh we have to uh cover but there are other uh amounts of money that are available to uh be used by the city should they uh so uh dean uh mr. so yeah mr yes? Grant, can i just ask you to stop and make sure that we're all on the where you're at um you said 15 20 pages back are you starting from the beginning in the three ring binder or where are you starting yeah the very first page as i have it is called the budget summary all 2021 funds and then uh, one two three 
seven, eight, nine, nine pages back, you'll see something that says balance sheet right in the middle. Is everybody getting there? It actually says it has a date of December 31st, 2019, but uh, it was ran on 9-15, 2020. I think for the, for the most part, and I, and I'll, I guess I should note for the record that uh, Ms. Uh, Councilman Plowman has uh, arrived and uh, make that uh, note for the record. Um, so the, the bottom line, I think, is that the city of Wilmer has fund balances. I mean, there's only six pages of, you know, small type, but it just comes down to the fact that, that we've got approximately 12 million seven or $12,373,000 in, in, uh, in assets, in fund balances, uh, in the general fund. And we have about a million in liabilities. Uh, so that gets us to that $13 million number that I had talked about earlier, 13, 385, 311. So total 13 ask, uh, liabilities of, of 1 million. Uh, so you end up with a balance of roughly $12 million. So we're, we're coming you know, into 2021 with, healthy general fund balance okay and and sometimes uh you will see the state auditor will send out messages and say you should have you know a reserve balance of 35 to 50 percent and uh we're i think we're sitting you know well well above uh 35 percent you know closer to 50 percent and uh, if you include all of the encumbered fund balances. So, you know, other than, you know, going line by line through this and, and identifying uh, like in the, uh, like the fourth page back on the balance sheet, when you sit and talk about, you know, our, our estimated revenues of $16 million, which, you know, you know we'll talk about in a little bit, we have expenditures of 17 million, so that obviously tells us, you know, we're we're spending about a million of uh, of our cash. Um, we've got restricted fund balance, you know, dollar amounts. We've got assigned working capital of four million dollars. But when you get down to the end, uh, the very last page, before you get to the revenue section, you'll see that you know, the total fund balance of 12, 373 and the total liabilities and fund balance you know of 13 million uh 385 uh that's that's what we're into <clears throat> that should be the information that we would have utilized uh, you know from the audit to come to what's what do we expect our starting point to be as far as as far as our fund balances so <clears throat> i don't know that if anybody has any questions i don't know that i can go any deeper into it than than that but go ahead if i may um i i agree with the the amounts that, that we have there but there are restrictions on some of the fund balances are we going to walk through those with why why some of those are where they're at so that we have an understanding of that or is that something we need to have Mr. Okins help us with, or I mean, the council has made these designations. That's always been the conversation in other years with why do we have these and what are they for and what can we use and what can't we use. Um, those are things that I think we need to get our arms around as we look at can we do city hall and where are we at and if we don't get all our LGA, what funds can we use? Those types of things. So those are yeah. kind of questions. I, I understand your concern. Uh, Councilmember Nelson, but if we if we're going to talk about the budget, that's different than City Hall. The City no. Hall is the City yes. Hall. Well, it is because no. what what well, we have is I, the um, budget. I'm 
I use that as a reason for us to understand the fund balances that are in the budget and what we could spend on capital improvements and what we can't spend on it. We don't have to talk about City Hall. I, I just wanted to talk about them in general with there have been restrictions on this money for a long time. We've chosen not to use some of these for capital improvement, those types of things. So I think that's my concern, not necessarily what we would spend it on, but is it available to spend? <clears throat> Yeah, that's that's deeper and, and has more history in it than I'm capable to explain. Some of you council members have more knowledge of those funds and accounts than I have. So that would be something I would say, if you want to get really down into the nitty gritty, that we would pass that off. And hopefully Steve will be back by our next finance meeting to, to be able to identify those. I, I just don't have the capabilities of, okay. of talking about every one of those we can accept this information as information that's available to us for the budgeting purposes but it's not going to answer our questions about what we could spend if we didn't get lga or if we decided to do certain additional capital improvements right yeah there you know i mean i can go so far as to say there's there's that there's a million dollars um uh that was set aside for you know emergencies and that could either be a tornado or, or that could be a flood or that could be, holy cow, the state took a million dollars of LGA. I know that much, but I don't know every one of those accounts and what the rules okay. are. So I would defer that to, to Steve, but I do know that we have uh, accounts that we can, we can draw on. I just don't know the ins and out like Steve would and he could clear it up for everybody, you know, really fast. I just okay. don't have. So do any other council members have questions or is this something we can come back to for a different purpose later or are you comfortable with this or do you want to hear about it next meeting? Go ahead, council member Osnes. My um, thought of what, when we talked, when we were supposed to talk about revenues tonight, that was exactly what you brought up was what I was thinking we were going to get out of this is I, how much money would we have to spend? Is there going to be a million dollars for the auditorium? And then in the back of my mind was going to be, if we were talking about revenue tonight, um, about City Hall and is there money and how do we, it, where is it and where can we get it from? and how is that is it even feasible? I, I guess I thought that was part of what the discussion tonight was gonna to be about. That was my anticipation. But I, I guess for me, the understanding of what's in the budget, because the uh, city hall is not in there. So how do we get our arms around what we have to do next year? And then can we have that conversation? So um, I, what I'm hearing from Brian is we need to go back to understand how the budget was built and what's there. And we're going to have to come back to this because we don't have those answers tonight. And I think we have to focus on what's in the budget right now and how we're going to do that. And then we're going to have to figure that out, the other parts out when we can. So I apologize. I, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I wanted to understand and I know the we don't, we use the deductible for the, um, League of Minnesota Cities Insurance Trust. We use, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why the funds are set there. And I think that's important for us to know, but it sounds like it's gonna be a different discussion than tonight. Mayor Calvin. Council member, uh, or, 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 or Chair Council member uh, Nelson, um, thank you for the opportunity to make a couple of comments. I think what we're trying to uh, share is that when the budget was prepared, um, in the past, I had taken some monies out of some of the reserve funds with the permission from the council. And I think what uh, staff, uh, along with, Mr., with our city administrator, are trying to point out is that uh, we have about $12.3 million of assets that helped us build this budget. And we're sitting in a very comfortable spot. And we do have a lot of the restricted funds, like what you had aforementioned, 
And so I think that just puts the city even in a stronger position. And I think that that is because of the good fiscal policies the city has. Uh, to the comment of Council Member Osmus, uh, if we choose to take some of those funds to do projects, we certainly have the ability to do that. But once the money is spent, the money is spent. Um, to the question of the million dollars for the auditorium, uh, Brian will help me with the number, but it's about 750000 that is in uh, the reserves, if you will, from two years ago. And then the monies, the 580, I'm going to say 585, it was 580 something, but not exactly 585, uh, that was moved forward uh, from the Finance Committee. So the city sits in a very strong fiscal position. And that's because of the decisions and the policies. And uh, I know Mr. Oakens could answer these questions off the tip of his tongue because he works with them on a regular basis. Uh, so we're at a bit of a disadvantage, but if we wanted to have these conversations, we certainly could start those conversations, but those should be started by the chair of the finance committee uh, leading those. So I just wanted to provide that background. If people have questions as to why uh, I use what I used, I'm certainly in a position to answer those, but. Um, we're in a very strong uh, cash position as the city of Wilmer. Okay, so let's go back to our intent tonight was to walk through the fund balances and we aren't going to have information. We'll have the information what they are, but we won't have the information with that. So I would defer that we need to get the accurate information when it's available or so to answer those questions as it relates to that but as it goes to the budget um do we want to just move on to in the revenues right now then would that be our best option yeah, chairman nelson yeah i guess i would recommend that and and i would hope that within two weeks that the uh, uh finance director would be uh, in attendance and uh, recap the the fund balances and the and the rules that go with each one of them so that you have a better idea uh, uh, and and quite honestly you know once we get through the, the the budget part of it you know the city hall is is a concern on how to finance that uh, for me also so it's not a topic I, I want to ignore uh, I'm just I'm just saying that by itself is a is probably a separate meeting all by itself on how do we finance city hall going into the future as compared to how do we review the uh mayor's proposed budget for 2021 uh two slightly different things they all deal with money but the the budget is is kind of before us and once we get through the budget i think then we'll have a better handle on how do we deal with city hall uh, you know shortly after that that, that's just my recommendation, I guess. Okay, so are the rest of the council members okay if we just move on to the revenue portion of it and, and come back to that another time? Not seeing anybody say anything different. So, Mr. Grants, if you want to move on to the revenue section. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the... Uh, 2021 budget narrative, which everybody has had probably a tremendous amount of time uh, to uh, to uh, read uh, and identify what the increases and decreases are. Uh, but I'm just going to uh, highlight those uh, for you all, and then we can kind of go in, in essence, to the what I call the first tab, and and uh, you know talk about uh, any revenues that you might have. Uh, uh, that are you know, concerning one way or the other. Uh, obviously, uh, the the 2021 budget was set up uh, to include a 3% a increase on the tax rate, going from 39 to 41 uh, mills. Uh, it generates roughly $308,000, of which uh, 116,000 of it was due to new construction in the city of Wilmer. Local our uh, Wilmer local government aid allocation would increase approximately 3.2%, uh, which is uh, $156,898. We also know that the state is in a tough financial bind and they're gonna, in all likelihood, be cutting uh, LGA. So 
the, keep that in the back of your mind that you know at some point in time uh, we're going to have to address how we deal with that. The proposed budget uh, basically says if if the world was perfect, we get all the money as we anticipate it. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do okay. It does not take into account of saying, well, if we get cut 200 or 300 or 500 or a million, uh, where are we gonna where are we gonna re remove that? That is a policy decision of the of the city council in the end. All right. Uh, one major thing that has happened this year, which uh, had been in in prior budgets, but for a, a year or two years was not, and that was uh, we were spending approximately two hundred fifty thousand dollars in uh, uh, in expenditures for outside engineering services. So now that we have uh, the assistant uh, city engineer in in house. We can now utilize all of our staff to their maximum, in which case we won't spend 250,000 outside with consulting engineers. We will actually be funding the, the, our own department like the city had been doing prior to <coughs> losing the assistant city engineer. So at this point in time, we're going back to the status quo like it used to be. And so that money, uh, doesn't need we don't need to keep the department operational paying for all the wages and keeping the lights on that sort of thing and pay for an outside consulting engineer we can do that in-house now so that's saving us uh, 250 you know roughly two hundred fifty thousand dollars of outside expenditures that uh, allows us to utilize those funds within the budget someplace else now uh, we did try to take into account decreases in building permits. Part of this is, uh, you know, due to COVID, uh, but uh, many cities, I'll point out, are not seeing a uh, reduction in construction. Uh, as, as noted, uh, when we did the uh, Swanson field bids, everybody was busy. They, you know, uh, some people didn't even bid at all uh, because they're just too busy. And so this may or may not be true, but we did try to account for that uh, in the building permits. Interest earnings are down. You know, we're you know we're getting you know 0.5 percent. You know, uh, on lots of money, and so it doesn't really relate to uh, you know capturing a lot of interest revenue. So we anticipate that would go down approximately 22 percent. Rents uh, are down due to the loss of mid-Minnesota development out of the city hall uh, basement location. Insurance reimbursements will be down 33% due to reduction of uh, retired employees on city uh, health insurance. Uh, refunds and reimbursements are reduced due to Rice Hospital now at least to Caris Health and reimbursements for Rice Care Center are being sent directly to them. So when, when we get money it's just a pass through we don't really account for it it's money in money out uh, so that's a decrease for us uh, potential revenues which we did not address we did not tap into them and uh, we noted that when we presented the budget uh, to the city council was that we did not include a um, franchise fee for center point energy which uh, could potentially generate 250 to three hundred thousand dollars and uh, uh, the uh, property tax increase uh, uh, larger than proposed. Um, we could consider, well, we could consider a larger tax increase. That's just what it says. Um, three, we could consider selling excess land. Uh, every city I've ever worked for uh, always said, well, yeah, we, we've got that piece of dirt. We don't know what we're going to do with it. It came with the purchase of the land for the water treatment plant, or it came with the airport and we had to buy it, so now it just sits there. Uh, so there are one-time monies for uh, potentially one-time expenses that you might wanna consider. Uh, we, we, we did do an overview of the uh, land that the city owns, and there are uh, you know 60 acres here and 40 acres there, and you know bits and pieces around it, that uh, have value and uh, 
we we just rent them out to farmers at this point in time you know we do get a revenue off of it but obviously it's not as much as if we sold it for seven or eight thousand dollars an acre okay um so that's one thing we did not include but it is a potential source if you're so inclined so that that's kind of the end of the highlights of of the the revenue side um other other than those you know a few things that have gone up and gone down uh you know most everything else is within you know variation from year to year uh you know we're not we're not seeing any any large increases you know uh we're not seeing any probably real major ones um obviously like rental of facilities like in in park and rec is still a concern uh due to covid that will people be able to rent you know, you know that's lost revenue for for those facilities and you know you can't get it back so uh i, I think we're under working under the assumption that some of those things are going to continue but are not um they're not a death knell to the revenue side so you'll notice like on uh page seven of the revenues you know, where you see Warhawk rents and fees, you'll see the curling club, um, youth hockey, you know, they've all been, you know, ice rental, they've all been adjusted and tried to uh, take into consideration what we anticipate uh, will happen. So uh, unless you've got, you know, any, a specific uh, question on the revenues, uh, uh one that maybe maybe doesn't make sense to you uh by all means uh let me know but as as you note on page 16 of revenues that we have uh you know 17 million 653 thousand dollars worth of revenues pledged to cover uh i believe the expenses are were something like 16 million something so uh we we have you know we have presented a balanced budget the problem comes in the unknown of what happens next year with local government aid and uh as we noted earlier what resources do we have to to uh fill that hole or plug that hole and uh the other side of the coin is what do we not want to buy and or construct that relies upon uh, property taxes uh, and, and our other revenues uh, so that we can then balance our budget after we know how much LGA is, is, is being cut. So uh, that's a broad recap. Uh, anybody have any anything that they have a question on? I'll, I'll try and do my best uh, to try and explain it. Um, but it, every department has met with finance to review their revenue stream uh, based on what was going on in 2020 and what we anticipate 2021 to be. Yes, Audrey. Um, Mr. Grant, do you want to review the LGA timelines? Um, it's my understanding. I mean, we've been told we will get our payment in December. And then um, the increase also right now is factored in. But the the state is on a July um, when they look to do that. When might we um, know? And um, I've heard people from the League of Minnesota Cities talking about cities being prepared or thinking about losing a quarter of their LGA. Who knows? Um, on the that um, league webinar that was done where Governor Walls was. He deferred his answer to, we're going to have to see what the federal government can do before we're going to be able to make any comments about LGA and what might happen. And so in preparing us for when we might be looking at LGA information, I'm just wondering if you'd be willing to walk through that timeline. And I think my goal with understanding the fund balances too is for us to feel comfortable that if we took a major hit with LGA, 
how would we how would we start to prepare ourselves to handle that and for us to be aware of what we can use what we can't what we can't use and how do we want to do that so yeah very very uh good bunch of questions uh what i can what i can tell you is that there's two ways for the legislature to handle this one is to unallocate and that means in mid-year of their fiscal year they just say you're not going to get it the second process would be for them to actually legislatively uh, set it up and say okay you're going to get your uh, 2020 last payment and your 2021 let's say your first payment but we're going to deduct it out of your second payment in 2021 and you know in which case we won't have those funds you know come the end of the year um so depending on which process they use it'll have different impacts because if they do it in the beginning of the year we don't have that money for the entire year if they do it at the end of the year you know for mo for most purposes that money is really for the following year it's, it's really you know it, our, our december lga payment doesn't go back and pay for our you know our expenses in july we've got cash flow that kind of takes care of that so it's really pushing it off into 2022 is is what that payment will do to us so if they do it early we have decisions to make real fast if they do it and try and make the adjustment in the 2021-2022 uh, state fiscal year then it's then we've got a little bit more time to you know figure out uh exactly what we need to do to counteract that loss of money one we'll know what that amount is we won't be guessing if it's 700,000 or 1.4 million we will know what it is and we can then start planning for it and making our cuts and making our adjustments. Uh, so that does then bring up a, a philosophical question. And that is sometimes, you know, when, when, when you prepare a budget, uh, the department's heads, you know, on January 2nd go, okay, we can order that truck and we can order that, that piece of equipment. We can get this new, new skid loader. We can get all this, you know, everything in the capital project. You know, everybody wants to get a jump on. And one of the things that we'll likely see is because uh, uh, our, our big trucks that we use in public works will take up up to nine to 12 months to order and get delivered. There's a reason for doing it on January 2nd, you know, because it's going to take until October, December before you get the truck. And now we're in another snowplow season. You know, it's just as the timing doesn't work out real well. So. We will at some point we're going to have to make a decision and say, you know, we we have to only get the stuff we absolutely positively have to buy, and then delay those other things until we know what happens after May at the at the end of the legislative session, and when the cuts are going to happen. So then we can say, oh yeah, not a problem. We can do that. Or no, that creates a really big problem. We should probably, you know, figure out a different way to fund. You know that purchase you can't really you know well you you can do that with the with the labor side of the budget and i think everybody kind of understands here that that uh, like many organizations that provide services the labor part is is a huge block of money uh of the budget and so yeah you can you can lay people off and you know you can uh not fill positions and, and things of that uh, nature uh, to try and save funds, you know, to apply towards any LGA cuts, uh, and and those things will all be, you know, likely considered uh, when the time comes. Uh, so, you know, that's just one more thing. Uh, as as we noted, uh, probably in our presentation, uh, the mayor's presentation to the city council, that there was actually you know, like four uh, positions included in the budget, and that. Uh, one was a police department a forensic uh, officer, uh, you know, deal with the computers and cell phones and, you know, doing that technical aspect. Uh, one was uh, a part-time Main Street, part-time uh, community uh, organizational uh, 
uh, uh, type position. One was actually filling a, a, uh, an accounting position that was approved in 2020, uh, but it was being recommended by me that it be actually uh, up, up increased in, in, in capabilities and be assigned the assistant finance director, which I might add, if we had an assistant finance director, I wouldn't be doing the talking right now. Just pointing that out. Um, then uh, the other one was the assistant uh, city administrator. Okay, uh, so those were the four positions. And as as I've had conversations with with some of you, uh, you know, about the budget prior to this meeting, that again is another question: Do we go into that year and fill those positions, or do we hold off and see what happens, you know, or not fill them at all? And so those are all great great philosophical discussions that'll come as we get further into the expense side, but it ties directly to the local government aid question, how much money can we depend on and what's gonna happen if it doesn't show up. So the revenue is questionable, the timing of the revenue is questionable, and the end results uh, end up being made in the expenditure side, but I just wanted to point those kind of things out right now because because it is all in one package it's not just revenues is there's an expense side and and we'll talk about that you know at another meeting so uh any questions that, that i can try and I, answer i would like us to stay focused on the revenue side because i think it's important for us to understand the revenue before we talk about what we can and can't do with expenses or what we want to do so anybody else have any questions on any of the revenues um taxes lga um any any questions right now or are we good for where we're at um my apologies i was hopeful that we would get the fund balances understood to know what our savings account looks like and looks like with what we can spend and what we can't spend and so we'll have to come back to that at our next meeting but um any questions from any council members? I am seeing none. All right, we will be back at this with the um, additional information. If you have questions, particular questions regarding um, the revenue side that we didn't touch tonight, if you would please send them to staff, um, we will make sure that we can answer those next time. So. Mr. Gramitz, anything else? No, I, and I wish I, I had more knowledge of these funds. Uh, and in 20 years, I probably will. Well, was, we, no, we had the conversation, should we do this? And we agreed that we needed to get started. And, and we did that tonight. And we will wait for the other information. So I thank you for you being willing to bring us what you did tonight. So. All right, um, that I think is pretty much, um, let's just have a, a quick conversation about the schedule. Um, we were next scheduled to meet November 19th. Um, I think we need to put the fund balances in there um, and review of revenue. And um, can we handle that, Mr. Graham? It's along with the department, departmental operating, do you think? I can handle it. Uh... <laughs> How about council members? Are you okay if we combine those two for the next meeting? I, I would think it would be e easy okay. enough to do. All right. I'm not seeing any dissenting. We'll stay with November 19th for that and then November 30th. And so we'll move forward with our budget schedule accordingly with that. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, we will now move on. Any last last chance for questions, anyone? All right, we're gonna move on to the action items. The first one is the deferred senior citizens assessments. Mr. Gramitz or uh, Ms. Thompson, are you presenting that? I am, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, before you tonight is a request to approve a 
deferring special assessment for senior citizen, disabled, or active military. We did receive one application this year, and it was actually for a 2019 improvement. So that that person is asking for a deferment of their special assessments, and that information is in your packet. Okay. Thank you. I'm looking for a motion from the Finance Committee to uh, for a resolution to adopt um, that. Sorry, I got the wrong page here. Ms. Thompson, do you read it again, please? What the recommendation is tonight would be to recommend council approve a resolution deferring special assessments for senior citizens, disabled, or active military. You're just moving this item forward to council for formal action. It's on the back side of my agenda when I was looking for. So um, I heard a motion. Is there a second? Mr. Fagley, you made the motion, correct? I did. Awesome, I'll second. All right, thank you. Any further discussion on um, that special assessment? If not, we will do a roll call. All right. Uh... <laughs> We're making you work tonight. Yeah, I know. I'm ill prepared. Uh, so, uh, Rick and Fernando, Audrey, who else is on finance? I can't remember. I'm drawing Julie. a blank. Julie? Can't forget about Andrew. What's that? All right, let's just go around. Finance committee, roll call. Julie? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Mr. Fagerly? Aye. And I will vote aye also. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, it, the budget part is done, so the, the part for the entire council, is that over now, or are you wishing us to stay for the entire meeting? Um, it otherwise, I've totally, got something to get to. It is totally up to you, and I apologize. That's why I went down to make sure that everyone was aware of the budget schedule. So let's just ask that question. Is there any other questions of the full council before we go back to the um, agenda items? If not, I thank you for your presence. You're more than welcome to stay, but um, I appreciate your time. So thank you. Are you good with that? Is that all right? Okay, thank you. You guys have a good night. I, I can't believe you all don't want to stick around. <laughs> okay. Ms. Thompson, you're going to do the next item too, correct? Correct. Okay, so the next item on the agenda tonight is... Uh, recommendation that council approve a resolution for certification of unpaid utility charges as a lien this is something we do annually we receive the the uh, past due accounts from the municipal utilities they have conducted a hearing on their end and for the people to come and dispute those charges so it is my office's responsibility to certify these to the county auditor for collection on taxes in the upcoming year of 2021. So there are several of those listed um, in your packet of the properties that are delinquent on their utility bills and the budgetary, the amount is $36,487.24 for the total that will be certified on various taxes for next year. That's a one-time one-time payment on their tax for next year. Okay, looking for a motion. Thank you, Councilmember I'll make that motion. Thank you. I'll second that. Thank you, Councilmember Asmus. All right, we have a motion and a second, and I have one question. I don't know if anybody else does, but is this figure up from previous years, or is this about the same? Mm -hmm. 
You don't, you're on mute. You're on mute, Judy. Sorry, I clicked, but I clicked the wrong button, I guess. Um, I believe it's up from last year. I don't have that figure right in front of me now. I didn't check on that, I guess. I know there's more properties. There seem to be more properties this year. Okay. I guess um, just a concern, I think, from um, being a part of the HRA and, and hearing some things, and uh, Councilmember Meski's not here, but um, just a concern, I think, about about the the utilities and rent that's going on. So any other questions regarding this? Councilmember Plowman. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering if we have any system of uh, checking these or a system that, that maintains uh, property addresses. Are these properties properties that we typically go through this process uh, for repeatedly? Is there any way of knowing that? That's my replacement. That would be something that you should address to the Wilmer Municipal Utilities. They would have that answer. Um, it it might be appropriate that we ask our liaison to ask that question, Councilmember Plowman. Is that something that um, Ms. Thompson could ask um, Councilmember Meski to follow up with? Sure. Yeah, I think it, I think that would be good to know, and it would be also germane, especially this year, because um, you know whether it not be uh, or whether or not it's a a history of delinquencies versus um, something that is uh, COVID year specific. I think delineating between the two uh, could be important because in my mind, I I felt like we had half as many last year, um, but then also if this is something that we need to address you know, a special program with, you know, Wilmer Municipal Utilities moving forward, if there's a one-time way of, of dealing with this versus if this is uh, kind of a typical thing for, for these addresses, I think it would be good to have that information. That's just my own thoughts. Thank you. Are we good with that? Chairman Nelson? Yes. Yeah, I uh, you know the addresses are on the notice that's attached to the count or the action form. You know it listed by parcel, but it says located at 1108 whatever avenue. Uh, since we are the ones that are putting this as a lien, we really could just look back two years at our prior and cross-reference who's who are repeat offenders, kind of a thing. I, I don't know that it needs to be this big drawn out investigation kind of a thing and you know get 10, 12 people lined up. Uh, I think we have we have all the information you know in the clerk's office. Um, Councilmember Plowman, would you be okay with um, just receiving an email on this or do you want to update on this at the council meeting when we vote on it or how would you like it? Yeah, I don't know that it like changes anything, and I agree with our administrator, uh, Mr. Gromans, that it doesn't need to be a drawn out investigation or anything like that. However, um, if if we were to look into it and find out that these are often the same properties over and over and over again, that may warrant um, you know a, a second look at um, you know why this is happening and what could possibly be done. I don't know if there are other channels or avenues that can be done to avoid it, um, but I've I've heard some ideas in the past that other cities have used. So like I said, does it, it's not a, a big investigative piece, but you know, if with more information, we would know better how to handle it. Mr. Gramitz, are you okay with just getting a response back to us to with that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I can do roll call now. Question. You can do roll call now? Are you sure? <laughs> I think so. I think so. You still have, do you still have the chips on your desk or do you need nutrition or anything? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, any other questions? I apologize. Roll call. Okay. Asmus? Aye. Biggerly? Aye. Nelson? Aye. Plowman? Aye. All A's, no A's. All right, that motion carries. And our next one, 
is the liquor license fee. Um, partial refund. And Ms. Thompson, are you doing that one too? I am, yes. Um, Madam Chairman and members of the Finance Committee, before you is a request um, to approve a partial refund of liquor licenses for the current licensing period, which runs from April 25th of 2020 through April 25th of 2021. Um, due to the COVID pandemic, you're all aware that most of these establishments were, were closed down totally for several months and had no income coming in due to liquor sales or whatever. Um, several communities throughout the state have been adopting a resolution refunding the on, or the on sale liquor places for about three months of their license fee. So it is my recommendation that we follow suit and do the same for our community's establishments. They are listed on your materials before you and the dollar amounts of their, their three month fees. So this is for discussion, you know, it's up, up to you guys. Council Member Asmus. Is that money that we can get back through that CARES money as a loss to the city? <laughs> The reason, the reason for that is simply this, is that um, the city council meeting uh, comes on the 16th and the deadline is the 15th. So it's, you know, had we done this two weeks ago, you know, it's, it's possible it could have, but just given the timing of, of recognizing opportunities and, and trying to get it through the committee system, et cetera, uh, it's, it misses it by, well, the 15th is a Sunday, so technically it had to been the 13th uh, to get approved by the city council. So um, I had a question if we had to do a refund or if we could do a reduction. I'm not sure it makes a difference to us from where it comes from in the budget, but instead of giving them money back to offer a reduction on their their fees next year if they apply for a liquor license that there would be a reduction yeah it has the same impact it just comes from a timing perspective you know you know having it in let's say november as compared to uh what's what's the date is it is it a june one judy our the licensing license? period starts april 25th okay so it's the difference between you know november and april um, so one other question, Councilmember Plowman, I do see that you wanting to ask a question too. It, is this a staff recommendation or has this been a request from these businesses? This is a staff recommendation. Councilmember Plowman. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I had my initial thought was um, the same as yours, uh, Chairwoman Nelson, that you know, maybe we could offer a reduction in next year's, but I think uh, what Brian said was exactly right. It's it's six to one half dozen. The 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 net effect is exactly the same, but I think the act of doing this for community businesses uh, speaks on behalf of the city, on behalf of our council, as to measures that we're willing to take to help mitigate some of the damage um, from the COVID uh onslaught and the the toll that it took on some of their businesses and i'm in favor of of anything that can help uh local businesses and i think um total financial impact on the city is not uh substantial enough that you know should take a huge amount of consideration in my personal opinion so with that said uh i would make a motion uh, adopting a resolution approving a partial refund of liquor license fees uh for April 25th, 2020 through April 25th, 2021, uh, in the amount of $9,812.40. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second?
I'll second it for discussion. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, obviously, there needs to be some discussion. So, who would like to? Uh, Councilmember Fagerly. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. How does this differ from the, the stingers that asked for a request for a reduction on their rent? Did some of these uh, businesses apply for the funding that was available through EDC? Do we know that? And through the federal government, the first phase of the uh, program. And why do you need a license to sell liquor? All you got to do is sell sell one drink and you need the license. So we don't look at them and say, how many drinks uh, have you sold in the year? You need a license, so you pay for the license. So. That's my line. Uh, piggybacking off of Mr. Fagerly's uh, questions. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. The fact that we do require a municipal license to uh, sell and serve alcohol, I think that further encumbers us to take action when uh, by force of governmental mandate, they're not allowed to sell their wares. Um, the fact that we necessitate a liquor license in the first place, I think that somewhat obligates us to then reimburse them when they are then not allowed to because if in fact they were um, doing business during the time that they are they were not quote authorized to be doing business there certainly could have been some financial price to pay so they were kind of put in between a rock and a hard place uh, to his questions regarding whether or not they did apply for and or receive um, other financial help uh, from local organizations, state organizations, federal organizations, that's a well-warranted question as well. I just think in terms of addressing this, the way that I look at it pragmatically is is by the fact that we charge these licensure fees locally. Therefore, if they're not able to utilize that licensure, it kind of only makes sense that we would help them out um, by refunding some of that, in essence, lowering their taxes. It's You can call it a fee, you can call it a license, you can call it whatever you want. It's a tax. So if it's a tax, they're paying, but they're not able to actually do what they're paying the tax in order to do. I feel it's only fair to give a portion of that back. Thanks. Councilmember Osmus, any thoughts? I was just looking at the figures. Um, yeah, I'm strugg I'm struggling with that. You know, the again, we talked about the precedents with the stingers, with the rental fees. It, you know, this is a trickle down of that, but I also um, am on the side of um, throwing any nugget we can at these these businesses in good faith from the city um where's this where's the nine thousand coming from do we have an answer it would in essence it'd be, be coming from the fund that it went into which is the general fund licenses you know that we we just kind of talked about as far as the revenues are concerned that uh, for 2021, that's one of the revenue streams that goes in to help fund the, you know, the 17 million in 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 costs in 2021. In this case, uh, they've they've given us the money, and uh, part of that money was to help fund through April of 2021. You know, not that that makes any difference. It just comes from the general fund. Ms. Thompson, do you know, did the other communities that do this use their CARES Act money to fund this? Um, to, according to some of the correspondence, some of the communities did 
you know, most of them have just been doing this in the last couple of weeks. So it was a timing on our issue. I was hoping to use CARES funds, but timing of committee meeting and council meeting didn't allow us to meet that deadline. Um, I, I, I'd have to comment that I'm a little concerned about setting a precedence and where we draw the line with who we help and who we don't help. When we talk about um, um, income streams or charging rent for our facilities and refunding rent or, you know, I, I'm, I'm struggling with this one. I definitely agree that, you know, how do we support these businesses? But if we do this now, I'm guessing we will do it. They're not back to full speed. So how do we pass judgment on that? Um, I, I am. I am concerned about it and, and just picking liquor industries versus who else pays fees. Um, we'll be back with, with what next. Um, so I don't know. And I don't know that there's any more information that's gonna help us to make this decision either. So Council Member Plowman, you, were, you wanted to speak or not? Did I not see that? <laughs> Um, I, I don't know that I did. I mean, I, I certainly understand, and it is a good argument that it 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 could potentially set a it could potentially set a precedent. I just I have a really hard time charging a tax for something and then removing one's ability to do what we tax them for. That doesn't seem right to me from a, a holistic perspective. Um, and any opportunity that I have to try reduce a tax or a license fee for not just myself, but anybody, I feel like that's in the greater scope of, of public good if we can help reduce that. And also, secondarily, I know that there were some funds out there that were enabled to help businesses, but it certainly didn't recuperate, you know, the, the funds that they did receive we're only fractional compared to the amount of money that some of these businesses lost. So I don't, um, although I would like to think that some of the federal and state programs that were out there were able to begin to scratch the surface or make up for the business lost, um, even though government mandate forced these businesses to not be in business. Um, I don't know that, that those things did that. So when I see the opportunity uh to go ahead and, and do that as a, a local government i know that it's within our financial capability so i'd like to do that but if uh, you know that's only my own personal perspective and certainly if somebody else views it differently um i fully respect that too council member Asmus. i agree with that thought process um As far as you know, picking and choosing which businesses we would help, this we're not charging other businesses a, a licensing fee for things. You know, this is this is just an alcohol license. Um, my other thought, okay, I know we sent some of the money to economic development, and we held some back just um, in case something came up. This doesn't cover that. It's still what it has to be spent by November 15th. It has to be approved by the city council before, in essence, the 13th. And the check wrote by the end of the day on the 13th. And we couldn't have, we couldn't have done that when we had everybody here 15 minutes ago. That's um. Yeah, well, yeah. it's passed now, so we can't do that. Um, I, I'm, I, I hear you. I'm frustrated with the timing of this too, and I'm a, I am concerned about setting a precedence um, when we're refusing to do some other things, or that we're going to be asked to do, to do them. So, I'm, I'm struggling with this one, um, and um, I'm not sure what life's going to be like when it's time for them to renew either. So. Um, Mr. Gramitz, do you have any words of wisdom for us on this one? It's a it's a policy decision, but I will tell you that 
it's it's not a tremendously large amount of money so i wouldn't hinge it on the money side of it that's that's whether whether we use cares money or whether we use it our own uh and revenue streams to make that refund that's not you know ten thousand is half a new car but or a quarter of a new car but the, the fact remains it's it's not a lot of money in a 17 million dollar general fund budget okay um so that's that's about all i can you know really say the the philosophical uh, question um uh, and policy decision that uh, that has been voiced by uh by the city council are, are all legitimate concerns you know they're all you know very valid and uh collectively that's that's the decision that uh, uh the council will will ultimately have to make on it so Councilmember Palman. Okay, I'm going to try one more metaphor, and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. I view this kind of like operating a toll road. Like we sell annual tolls for people to be able to drive on the road. The state came along and shut down our toll road. Therefore, all of our users of that toll road were not able to utilize our toll road, which they paid for in an annual pass. We as a tolling organization are hoping that they will pay for their next annual toll. Are we going to show them some goodwill by refunding them the portion for that duration of time they could not use the toll road due to the government shutdown? Or do we just tell them tough luck? That's my best analogy. Okay, Council Member Osmus and Council Member Federley. I buy that one. They could just take a back road. These guys, <laughs> these, but, these guys is only option is is are they going to buy a liquor license again? They can't go anyplace else to get that liquor license. Um, bingo! And therefore, I think you did an exact job, great job of proving why you should vote for this. <laughs> Councilmember Fagerly. I say we call a special session next week and. Uh, authorize the money from the Keras uh, fund to pay for it. It's the easiest thing to do. Mr. Gramitz, can we do that? I believe you can, sure. Okay. Ms. Os Council Member Osmus. I like that idea because it irks me that we would spend almost ten thousand dollars that could have been covered and again not that it's a huge amount of money but there are places we could use that okay we have a motion and a second council member plowman okay thanks i i can jump on board with that guys um because the argument can be made we as a city were not the ones that shut their businesses down it wasn't us municipally telling them they could not use their liquor licenses. So it seems as though the appropriate funding mechanism would be less of the city, more of the entity that shut them down. So I'm on board with that. Okay, would you like to change your motion and uh, ask for a friendly second or withdraw it? And how do you want to do it? I would uh, motion to amend my original motion um, that a a uh, special meeting be called to be able to authorize these funds uh, to recompensate these local establishments using the CARES monies that the local municipality received as a funding mechanism. All right, you're making that as an amendment to your motion. Is there a second yes. to the amendment? Okay, we have a motion yes. and a second to amend the motion. We will now vote on the amendment. Councilmember Asmus, did you have a question? Can we discuss it first? We can discuss it. Quick question. Um, how much money did we keep back? We have the money. That we didn't give to the economic development? $4,210. No, it was like $55,000. <laughs> we they are working on spending, and this will help to spend it, OK? Well, yeah, we, we held back 55000 uh, I've authorized, oh, I'm going to say um, 
maybe 24, 25,000 of uh, maybe even slightly more than that of acquisition. So we've got 25,000 uh, sitting there. We, okay. we have a few situations where we've probably had some uh, uh, emergency paid sick leave, uh, but that shouldn't amount to, you know, too much. So I, I think we have adequate funds to do this. Okay. I just didn't want to go through all this rigmarole and then we gave it all back to the EDC. Let's, Mo, let's have we're, a I think we're good. on the amendment. Roll call. Roll call. Uh, Bakerly. Aye. Bowman. Aye. Osmus. Aye. Nelson. Aye. All right. We have um, uh, now we have a motion. Who wants to read the motion or restate it? <laughs> motion to call a special meeting, correct? Yeah, I think the I think the motion is just to call a special meeting. Uh, I don't have the dates. Two and seven is the ninth. Yeah. Uh, somewhere in the week of the ninth, it'll probably be the, the the 12th or 13th, just just because of timing and Veterans Day on the 11th, that kind of thing. Uh, can to, we, can't, we can do it during the day, can't we? Yep, yep, yep. yep. We okay. can do it anytime. We can get everybody together to consider right. uh, refunding a portion of the 2020-2021 liquor license fees as identified in the action request from the cares funding from the cares funding yep okay so that's you're good with the motion julie you're good with the second any further discussion council uh, ms thompson i just want to note that the council is planning to get together next thursday afternoon for the board of canvas at 2 30 is this something that we could probably schedule the meeting after that the special meeting after that there's Everybody. several of you. I haven't heard from everyone yet on the board of Canvas, but the majority of you will be there. Just That's a, a suggestion. Idea. That's a great idea. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion? And I just want to say thanks to Councilmember Fagerly for bringing it up. I think this is a great, it's much more palatable, and I think resolves some of the other concerns that are out there perhaps for um, um, what might might become as requests. So, all right, roll call. Uh, okay, this would be Plowman. Aye. Osmus. Aye, and good good catch, Judy, on us all getting together next week. Yep, Nelson. Aye. Bagerly. Aye. Uh, four ayes, zero nays. Okay, this motion passes. And I'm feeling guilty for making um, Dr. Ramstead sit here, so I'm going to do uh, a um, let's skip down to the Renaissance Zone. It's for information only, so that he can um, be on his way too. So, um, Dr. Ramstead. Okay, uh, actually, uh, uh, Chair Nelson, uh, yeah, the first one is the Airport Operations Agreement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll go stay with the agenda. You go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, good evening, uh, Chair Nelson and committee members. Uh, staff tonight seeks a motion recommending that the council adopt the resolution approving the airport operations agreement with Oasis Aero. The airport operations supervisor agreement is the same as previously approved uh, three years ago between the city of Wilmer and Oasis Aero. As airport operations supervisor, Mr. Rudnigen will continue to perform the day-to-day -day activities necessary to keep the Wilmer Municipal Airport safe, accessible, and operational on a daily basis. As a consultant in the specialized field of aviation, Eric has proven himself over and again over the past three years as more than capable to continue serving as Wilmer's operations supervisor at the Wilmer Municipal Airport. The fee schedule uh, per discussions that I've had with uh, Eric will remain the same as it was between 2018 and 2020 and is in the proposed 2021 budget of $48,000 per year from 2021 to 2023. And with that, I take it back to you, Chair. All right. 
Do we have anyone who wishes to make a motion to adopt the resolution make, for the House Member Palman? Yeah, I would make that motion adopting the resolution approving the airport operations agreement uh, with Oasis Aero Inc. Uh, according to the fee schedule as documented in our literature. All right, is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Plowman. Thank you, uh, Chair Nelson. I'll be very brief. Um, I just want to voice my support for uh, Mr. Eric Rundigan and also Oasis Aero Inc. Um, the past uh, quite a few years, I, I don't know if you remember a few years back, but we did have some difficulty when it came time to transition uh, with our FBO uh, from a former FBO to our current FBO. Um, before, during, and since that time, if Mr. Rundigan has been uh, a driving force in terms of keeping that airport, uh, just like Mr. Uh, Dr. Ram said, said uh, safe, uh, operationable, uh, operational and accessible. He does an excellent, excellent job and, and he's there burning the midnight oil when that needs to happen. Um, so I am enthusiastically supportive of keeping him on board uh, out at the airport. Thank you. Thank you, very well said. Any further discussion? If not, um, I will look for a roll call to adopt the resolution approving the airport operations agreement with Oasis Aero Inc. Mr. Gramitz, do you want to do the roll call? I forgot to turn it on. Osmus? Aye. Hagerly? Aye. Nelson? Aye. Plowman? Four ayes, zero nays. Aye. Thank you. Now our next item is um, Dr. Ramstead. I'm sorry I missed that other one. On um, to talk about the uh, um, HRA and the uh, deed funds. Thank you, Chair Nelson uh, and committee members. Um, for information, uh, staff is seeking a vote of support to move forward. Uh, to partner with the HRA and use the $68,000 in deed funds that are remaining for the Renaissance Zones storefront incentive. Uh, for a little history, on May 4th, 2020, the City Council adopted the Renaissance Zone, which is a new zoning overlay encompassing the Central Business District and surrounding areas. It's the forest census tract in the City of Wilmer. The Renaissance Zone is a five-year pilot program intended to encourage economic development. The Renaissance Zone will offer greater flexibility relative to zoning requirements otherwise imposed by the underlying zoning and is regulated by Section 12 of the Zoning Ordinance. On August 3rd, 2020, the City Council adopted the additional incentive to provide $5,000 and $10,000 matching loan grants for storefront improvements in the Renaissance Zone. These loans or grants will be forgiven at 20% each year over a five year term that the building continues to be owned by the applicant. The Planning and Development Services Department seeks to partner with the Candy Ohio County Housing and Redevelopment Authority who will administer the incentive for 2021 only. They'll charge us a fee of 15% of the project costs. That will be charged to the deed account, not to the applicant. For said fee, the HRA will meet with commercial property owners to determine the scope of their work, prepare contractor specs, solicit contractor bids for them if they'd like, award bids if they'd like, prepare closing documents, collect owner portion of funds, complete closing, record docs, inspect during the construction, and perform Davis-Bacon wage interviews when necessary, pay contractors, track projects, and report to deed. So they will offer a significant amount of services. The goal is to award as many storefront matching loan grants up to the remaining deed balance of 68,000 as we possibly can. And we're hoping that this will be a catalyst and make it contagious for a lot of others to step in and make improvements to their buildings also. With that, I, I give it back to you, uh, Chair Nelson. Thank you, Dr. Ramstead. Um, my information um, 
indicated that you were presenting this just for information only, but if I heard you correctly, correctly, you would like a motion to support this. Is that correct? Uh, not necessarily a motion, but I would I would appreciate a vote of support to pursue uh, the as you as the finance committee to go ahead and partner with the HRA. Uh, it's uh, as Steve, Mr. Okins. Uh, uh, suggested uh, he, he suggested that as a courtesy we would involve the finance uh, committee and to get its nod of approval uh, to move forward with this. Okay, Mr. Gramitz, do we need to take any action or can we just um, put it in the minutes or how conversation questions people have? Are we supportive? <laughs> Councilmember Fagerly. Thank you, Chairman Nelson. I'm supportive of this. My question was, they're going to do in inspections of the work being done? Uh, yeah, they can. Um, they probably would just they would probably just join our building inspector and probably go in the final to make sure that the work was completed. That's probably just it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They don't have a building official. They have a carpenter, but he's not right. Licensed. Building of yeah, no, it's more of a kind of a funding financial inspection just to make sure that the, the funds were used and the work is done and to sign off on it, that sort of thing. Well, don't we have to inspect it too? Yep, yep, no, oh. it's only permitted. All right. Uh, Madam okay. Chair, I guess I would recommend that we, if you were in favor of this, you could uh, do a uh, motion of support but that doesn't necessarily need to be an action item for the city council at the next meeting. Okay, so we can just make a motion of support or recommend a motion of support from the finance committee or it'll yeah. be part of the minutes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Are we good with that? Anyone want to do make that a motion itself? or we're not gonna actually vote on it. Is that what you're saying, Mr. Gramitz? I don't have any problem with you voting on it. It, it. Just to show that the finance is in support of, if everybody wanted to raise their hand and Ms. Dr. Ramstead sees the, the, the thumbs up, he's got that too. So. Okay. Well, let's let the minutes reflect that the finance committee was supportive of the recommendation. Are yep. we good with that? All right, thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you very much. I wish you the best with that. I know you've been working hard on it, so I, really I hope you the best. Well. Yeah, and it's thank good you. to use those funds too, so that's great. Okay, and um, do you have anything else um, this evening with us? Um, I, well, uh, you know, I could go through, you know, where the uh, Building inspections. I know that was mentioned earlier, so I could I could actually give you some highlights uh, on that. You know, we're up to about two hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars in revenues. Uh, about thirty-eight percent of the construction is in retail. About twenty-three percent is institutional. Six percent is industrial. Twenty-two percent is multifamily housing, and eleven percent is single-family housing. Uh, we actually have more permits this year, almost uh, 150 more. We got 658, and last year we had 494. But uh, we had a couple of huge projects. We had Ziegler Cat, and we had the uh, mental health uh, facility. Uh, Ziegler Cat was 15 million, and the mental health facility uh, was 9 million. And you just take those two, and that accounts for. Uh, our drop in revenue. So we're more busy, but we don't have the revenues. And um, that can happen in a small community that, you know, a couple couple big projects can can uh, throw the throw the numbers out of whack. Um, and we're glad to have those projects. Um, but just I just want to give you some explanation of where we're at. I appreciate that. So thank you for the work that you're doing. So thanks. All right. We will move on to our next item, and that is the fund balance designation. Mr. Gramitz, are you going to speak to this, please? Unless somebody else volunteers. <clears throat> I'm just happy you didn't see me shove potato chips in my mouth right now, so <laughs> we're all good. Um, all good. <laughs> the, uh, 
uh, both the fund balance designation that we're working you know, talking about right now and the following item, the budget management policy, uh, came out of the audit report that uh, Mr. Elkins put together those adjustments to both of these items, but initially first here, the fund balance designation to match up with the recommendations that our auditing firm uh, had suggested. So we immediately got on that. We uh, uh, have made uh, the adjustments. Uh, I, I don't have the uh, uh, strike through and underlined version. I've got the same one that you have, but I think it was just tidying it up, if memory serves correctly, as far as the fund balance. Uh, how much can you have in your your uh, fund balance? The other item was more, you know, budget management. Uh, if you go over, you got to plug that overage with money to make sure your your budget is all uh, uh, done uh, appropriately. So you got the holes plugged. So, uh, but this is the 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 fund balance, and I think uh, part of that has to do with how much you invest in long term. You know. Uh, it, you don't want too much at 10 years. You don't want too much at six months. You know, you want to stagger them out and and have the right percentages. Uh, as as the auditor stated, it's kind of moot at this point because there's no place we can invest for 10 years. There's no there's no place we can invest for five years, and I wouldn't want to do it even if we could. So our all of our investments are really short, uh, close term uh, type investments. But this this document also deals with that. So it's just meeting the, the right. identified uh, items from the audit. Okay. So we are, and Mr. Okins did present this or give it to us a, a month or a meeting ago for us to review. Um, we are looking for a motion to um, recommend to council to approve a resolution adopting the revised fund balance policy as presented. Councilmember Osmus? I'll move. Bill move? We, yep. Is there a second? Second. Was that Mr. Plowman, Councilmember Plowman? Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any questions? All right. Seeing none, Mr. Gramitz, would you like to do roll call? All right. Uh, Fagerly. Aye. Nelson. Aye. Plowman. Aye. Asmus. Aye. <coughs> Rise, zero nays. All right, thank you. And our last item, Mr. Graham, it's already talked a little bit about, but in, we are looking for a resolution to adopt the budget management policy as presented. And we heard that it was a request from the auditors too. So, so moved, Plowman. Second, Osmus. All right, I missed who made the motion. Was that Councilmember Plowman? All right, and second, Osmus. Mr. Gramitz, any comments? This additional? No, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah. It's just one page or so. Okay. All right. Um, I do not see any other questions, so we'll do a roll call. Uh, Nelson. Aye. Plowman. Aye. Osmus. Aye. Bigerty. Aye. Four ayes, zero nays. All right, that motion carries. That is the last of our action items, um, discussion items. We've already dealt with the fund balance policy. We already talked about our next meetings. Is there any other comments, questions with that? Um, we do not have the COVID-19 monthly funding report. I think Mr. Okins had list, listed it there. We will look forward to that at the next meeting. And uh, Mr. Graham, it's anything you want to share with us as departmental information? Uh, you know, nothing is crossing my mind uh, right at this point. Uh, should something come up, I'll be sure to uh, alert the, the, the finance committee and or city council members. Okay. All right. And the future agenda items, we're going to leave them alone for now. There's nothing new on those um, as I reviewed with Mr. Graham. So. Is there any other business that anyone wishes to discuss this evening? Councilmember Fagerly, you're good? I am good. I'll All make right, a thank to adjourn. All right, we'll accept that. We have a motion. Second. Second. 
Um, we are adjourned. Thank you all for your time, and we'll work on the next meeting. How's that sound? So, thank okay. you. Good. Everybody have Mr. a good night. Kravitz, take it easy on Bambi. Yeah, don't shoot Bambi. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye.